nothing gives me more anxiety than driving a truck and a boat through probably one of the busiest airports in the United States. Flat out, flat out anxiety. And you know, we're, we're also in the home of the notorious mass hole drivers where uh, the only means of getting a license around here is you have to spit in your instructor's face and run at least three red lights um, and then you're qualified. You get your license, which is pretty crazy. There. there they are. There they are. Nice to meet you, man. You're pretty much a boss. Thank you to see you, man. It's not like you're all taking your bag. Hey, you see you, man. How was it? Let's get out of here. Good to see you guys again. Holy. Wow, it's, it's been, been about a what? few years. Five years, I think. <laughs> So I think it's no, like seven. I think it might be almost seven years. Oh right? my gosh. It was 2018. Oh my gosh. What is it now? Yeah, that sounds about right. What have you guys been up to? Traveling? Since we saw you last. Yeah, well, that's, might need a longer car ride for that, but <laughs> yeah. Um, Kyle's been fishing lots. <laughs> yeah. Fishing heaps. Fishing every day of his really? life. No, not, not fishing every day. He's a bank tramp. I've done a... I, <laughs> yeah. Bank tramp. <laughs> <laughs> We cut in this slip weight thing off. Yeah, you can take that off. I'm gonna rig up a new. Cod, Mexican cuisine style. PEI mussels and some chorizo sauce. Um, Mexican style coag, and then calamari. These oh, that one should be somewhat spicy. This is hot. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Do you guys have a good tolerance for heat? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> we'll find Whoa, out. that is. <laughs> that was. Spicy. Cheese. There's a lot going on there. We got air. Oh, um, are they seeds? Yeah. Oh, I can watch the baseball and you can spit seeds at people. Spit seeds. Have you ever had pumpkin seeds before? Um, no. <laughs> can do you do the same thing? You, no, you eat those whole. Really? Yeah, yeah. With the other seeds, you, you know, you just you crack it open and then you get the inside. But are you, can you chuck a whole handful in your mouth and then just yeah. do one at a time? Like, yeah. I I'm impressed. I'm a, I'm a full bred American. <laughs> It's like, it's like we learn it straight out of the womb. 
Our mother was teaching us at an early age how to two seats and fit them one at a time. What am I driving? I'm driving. I have no idea where I'm going. Okay. I like the fact you don't have to chew them and then spit, spit out them the out. Yeah. yeah, that you is nice. Eat them all. Mm. What'd you think? That good. Yeah. Slow morning on the canal. Usually the way she blows, this place is either a location where you can have the most ridiculous non-stop striped bass action of your entire life, or it could be the Dead Sea. Today it's the Dead Sea. Not, uh, not looking so good for us, but we had to try it. Had to return to one of my favorite fisheries on earth. Some people see the, the canal fishery as being, you know, toxic and crowded, but this place holds some really good memories for me. So I, I like I like coming here. Uh, and it was cool to show the, the boys also the Cape Cod Canal. Tide's still rushing in, but we might, uh, instead of waiting here for fish to come through that aren't gonna come through, we might head back to the Airbnb, hook up the boat, and drop into some salt ponds, just so that way we can get some fish today. The goal for, for me at least, is to show you all what the Cape fishing culture is all about, but all the while showing them in person, real time. And I want them to, you know, experience this place to the fullest because Cape Cod's magical. See a big mouth watch when you open your mouth. Oh, oh, oh you're a fish. Oh, that's awesome. Bluegill. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've been to the canal bites or lack of bites. We've hopped on the whaler. We're gonna go explore uh, some shallow water, see if we can just get something started. This time of the year, you can pretty much always count on some of these saltwater ponds that are adjacent to uh, either Buzzards Bay or Cape Cod Bay to have some striper. And seeing as it's day one, I think we need a nice warm up. Let's get some fish in our system. There's tons of bait all throughout this little pocket, this little pond right now, which is usually an indication that there should be predatory fish shortly behind, whether that be bluefish, albies, or of course, striped bass. But we're gonna give it a dangle. We've got three anglers in the boat, plenty of cameras rolling. Wind's picking up a little bit, but we should be protected uh, in these backwaters, which is love. Well, we originally came out to this little harbor to chase after some schooly stripers just to get the momentum going, but we stumbled upon uh, some feeding false albacore. I've always caught them um, on the beaches, just on like, just south of Buzzards Bay, but they're in here right now feeding on little tiny glass minnows. So we're gonna try our luck at uh, picking off one of our goal species in an area where I didn't necessarily think that was possible. So cool, so cool. That was a pretty good feed, little feed right there. Yeah. How can they move so quick? They're insane, dude. You, when, when you do hook one, you'll see how they move so quick. Oh my God, dude, they're decent. They're decent albies. Yeah, they were on the back side of this and there's, we saw someone. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, nice one. Keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs> there you go. Job. I'll land him for you. Bring him to Poppy. <laughs> nice job, dude. That was cool. It came out of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> it's so hard. The rod just smacked around in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, man. First ever striper of the trip. We'll take it.
Nice one. It's a start and it's a first fish of hopefully many. <laughs> it only took a few years, but I got, <laughs> got my first one. Wow. Dude. Thanks, John. Yeah, Thank no you worries. so much. No worries. We saw some bigger ones too, so hopefully those start feeding. Oh, there was fish down there that was four, four times, times, five times bigger than that. Oh, it's big. Oh, it's a big one. I know, I know, I know. Loosen your dragon a little bit. It's a big fish. It's a big fish. It's a really good John. 30 inch or John, this is the fish I came for pretty much. What? Mate, that was such a good blow up. And I was just about to reel in. Yeah, 30 inch baby. You said it was on me. Right here. <laughs> wow, he's big! That's a good fish, man. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, mate. We got it. Go on, Sean. Oh, look at that. Quality striper, dude. <sighs> that is exactly what we came for. John said there was a fish following. I didn't even see the fish, and then out of nowhere, boom! It exploded. And that was on the end. Wow. I'm so glad we made this trip happen. Well, we made it happen. Day freaking one right after uh, Carl caught his first striper of the trip. Uh, we went back and revisited the, uh, the area and he's got himself his first 30 incher. That's a good fish for the Cape, especially in these small saltwater bays and ponds. We're gonna tape this guy and just, just for sure. On the top water. And on the top water. The best way you can catch any fish, especially striped bass. We're just uh, gonna take note of all the big fish. It's cool to measure these fish and see how large they are. I'd have to guess that's probably 34 or maybe 32, but we'll find out for sure here in a second. 34 inches. Wow. 34 inch striped bass, guess, man. John. Yeah, decent guess. That's what, you, that's what you said, wasn't it? Oh. They go mental. Mate, they're strong. Yeah, they are strong. They're so strong. It was so funny because I gave I gave uh, Carl the smaller rod, the smaller bass rod to use, and that, that fish is about as big as I'd go on a small rod, like a bass rod like that, like a largemouth rod. So that was probably a good fight. Quality fish, hopefully we just get some more, man. Congratulations, I'm, I'm um, so glad you guys are here experiencing this. So happy right now, <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> oh. Keep it going, just keep it going, keep it going. Just keep it going, you're My good. Flew out the water. Keep it going, he's still on you, he's still on you. The little guy, still on you. That was cool. Hey, what? It hit the lure, and the lure went flying. Flew, yeah, there. flew out. <laughs> oh, oh, he's still there. <laughs> I just enjoy watching Carl catch fish. I haven't even gotten a single fish today. and I'm having more fun. I'm having more fun watching you wrangle these things in. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I wasn't ready. Oh, this, I wasn't ready. It's good for a couple reasons. One of which is it's our third fish of the day, and it also might be a fish that Alex can cook up for us. I think it's a slot fish. We'll take a look. Yes. Good job, man. I mean, it's 28 inches on the dot. Wait, what does what, that mean? What's the size you have to eat? It's a uh, 28 to 31. That's the slot size. Oh, so we can eat it? Yeah, this one we can eat. Woohoo! your fish. I'm okay. sorry, bud. <laughs> Oh, that was so insane. That was so insane. That was so crazy, dude. Oh, it's two. Oh my goodness. You're good. Keep, you got him. You got him. Fight him. Fight him. It's absolutely madness out here. I, uh, I really had low hopes after our canal mission, and we've been fishing in these little ponds for quite some time, but we've stumbled upon you know, a decent school of quality fish. Uh, it's just how this place works. I mean, literally one moment, you're not getting a single bite and the next. This it's guy, kicking off. This guy from England is just kicking my ass. Unbelievable. But that's the beauty of the Cape, man. This has been, uh, it's been a pretty good start to our trip, no doubt. All on top water too. This is number six to my 
zero. Oh, no. Came undone. Counts. It was. It was small. Yeah. It small. Was. Let small. that one go. Small. <laughs> oh my God! Big one. Oh. Big one. Big. That's a nice one. Go That's on. a big one. That's a big one. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Wow, that's a good fish. Wow, that's a nice one. That's huge, man. Jeez, that's a good one. Little first cast back with the dock. Oh my gosh. Whoo, finally. I feel what it's like to catch a striped bass. Thank you for letting me catch this fish, by the way, Carl. Ooh, it's a 7 Eleven rod. This thing is beating me up. Come on, my boat. Carl and Alex's guide service on the gate. Oh. That is beautiful. That's a quality one, man. That is another 30 incher, I think. Another 30. It seems like these bigger fish are out using this deeper hole right now, man. It's a nice one. Beast. It is a beast. Oh. Yes, sir. This is what. This is why we came here, boys. Oh, let's go. Well, if I'm gonna catch one fish today, this is definitely the one to catch. Nothing beats shallow water striped bass fishing. What we're doing is. You know, not what a whole lot of people come here to do, but it's a unique way to catch all different sizes of fish. People mistaken these shallow marshes are only full of tiny striped bass, but this is a quality one, definitely well over 30, probably 35 inches. My biggest of the trip so far, and it's only day one. I just want to thank uh, Carl for allowing me to catch one today. Uh, if he wasn't fumbling about back there with the drone, then I might have not uh, caught that fish. But <laughs> we're out here doing what you guys dreamt of doing many moons ago. These guys came to the Cape uh what in 2018 and it was a lackluster send yeah but hopefully we're making we're gonna make up for uh some lost opportunity one last look at this fish and we'll drop him back <laughs> that is a beast as well that is a freaking beast Fishing is, to me, more than just about the catch. It's about what you do on land as well, the experience. And one of the best ways that I know you can experience the Cape other than casting at Stripey Boys is to eat some food here. There's actually some really good food in the Cape, but uh, actually today we're gonna cook our own food. We just got finished shopping at West Falmouth Market. Uh, Alex is a chef by trade, and he actually gathered uh, copious amount of ingredients to make a proper, proper, fish and chips in New England, which is very fitting for a couple of guys that are from Old England. Um, I'm excited. This is going to be really good. I think today was a success. It took us a while to get on those bass, but once we did find them, they were the right ones, and it, it's going to help us kind of build upon a pattern for the next couple of days. I think tomorrow's weather is going to be solid. But for now, let's celebrate, head back to the Airbnb, and uh, grab some grub. Good morning from the Cape. It is officially day number two here on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, taking the Old Englanders, fishing in New England. It's been pretty good so far. Yesterday, we 
Banged up a few nice ones, caught two fish over 30. Carl caught his biggest striped bass ever, and it just so happened to be on top water. We did battle the wind a bit, and it was a bit of a challenge to get back on those fish. Seeing as I haven't fished in this location in probably four years, I think, if I'm counting correctly. So it's been a while, so I'm still getting acquainted. But we managed. We, we succeeded in, in accomplishing what we came out to do, but every day is gonna be a new day. We're gonna try to accomplish and top our previous day by catching more fish, bigger fish, and just all the while creating a, a more exciting story for you guys to watch at home. Anyway, long story short, I, I woke up a bit late this morning. I think I snoozed my, my clock maybe four times, five times, and uh, I went to take a look at my phone uh, so I could shut my alarm off because it was really annoying. And I got a, a text from my buddy uh, Bobby, who lives out here, really great guy. And my buddy Bobby told me that the fish were going absolutely mad at the canal today, which is where we started yesterday morning and didn't see a single piece of bunker flicker off in the distance. It just goes to show how quickly a bite can either occur or also disappear. I think we're gonna make it a, a mission to check out the canal every morning after hearing that because uh, one of the striped bass goals that I'd like to accomplish, or at least I'd like them to accomplish, is to get a 30 pound stripey boy. That's a mega fish. Anyway, enough talking, John. No one really cares about your morning antics. Um, I am rigging up the whaler right now. We're tying some FGs, checking knots, sharpening hooks, and getting prepared for yet another full day of fishing in the mecca of the Atlantic saltwater scene. I need coffee though. A little groggy. Let's, uh, let's get everything twigged up and rigged up and salt. Here and it just oh look at all the bait spraying oh those are good fish boys no way yeah. Yeah, I swear. these are good fish man these are not small <laughs> jesus no, it's a decent fish, one. Oh, he's off don't worry he's gonna be back on in two seconds you're about to get smoked cuz look at him go look at him go look on the surface I'm hooked up. This is unbelievable. These are bad fish. Are they striped bass? Oh yeah, they're striped bass. This is incredible, boys. Found a nice little feed here. Unbelievable. Well, we literally just launched the boat and uh, off in the corner of my eye, I saw an absolute blitz of micro striped bass. And although the goal is to get big fish today, we have to uh, Seize this opportunity. Oh, dude. Oh my God, dude. Keep working it fast, 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 fast. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Good yeah, job. That was the coolest shot. I'm so happy with that. Oh my gosh. Look at the ball. There he goes. Bye bye, Striper. Yay. First fish of the day. How long is it? I want to fuck it. <laughs> this is a kind of a sick feed. <laughs> uh, John, how long did you get for that? Uh, it took three minutes. No, I mean, how long is the fish? Oh, that's going to be, we're going to call that 16 inches. <laughs> I have no hooks on this lure. Oh, I have one. No hooks? I have one hook. He's got wieners. Yeah, <laughs> we need to make a fire you, now. You can... brought glizzies. Yeah. This is the wild. <laughs> Just for you, John. Just for you. Oh my God, Alex Great. brought glizzies and a baguette, which is now in his pocket. <laughs> and he's still gonna probably just smoke us all today in fishing with a baguette in his pocket. Oh, and cheese. Yeah. Go on. Uh, cheese. Yeah. Wait, are you getting hungry already? We've only just started. Well, you see, the, the uh, key to success is preparation in not only the fishing tackle, but also your bodily health. I've prepared nothing, and I'm going to prepare for today by eating sausages, what? baguettes, and cheese. <laughs> cool. Do you like? Savina. It's not amazing. Really? You're telling me a cold sausage wrapped in cheese is not amazing. <laughs> that snap, I bet, hits so. You guys, uh, good thing I brought some toilet paper because I think maybe we'll do some poop decking today. I know for sure I have to. I drank a coffee and it is racing right through my system. We're out of the pond. We're gonna head out of the pond, go explore the ocean. 
we've got perfect winds to do some running around, um, but we might return here if they if they come back and the tide comes up. That was a nice little flurry though. That's just a prime example of how fishy this place is. We literally stumble upon it by accidentally, which is crazy. traveled 320 nautical miles to a chain of islands. I believe this is the Elizabeth Islands? I, I'm not sure, I've never been over here. It's just adjacent to Woods Hole, but uh, we're out there. And I know it may seem like we're right back where we started, but this is a, a, a chain of islands that is just right on the lower end of the Cape. And I've never been here before. So, you know, I filmed a lot on the Cape, I fished the Cape a lot, but really this trip, I wanted to try some new things. There's a lot of boats over here. I don't know what they're doing. I would assume they're albie fishing. Um, but we're here for some bass and you know if the do if the valbies do show up we'll also seize that opportunity. But this is sick. We, we yeah, in all seriousness we probably took like what was it, like a 50 mile rip to uh, to a spot and it's just flat calm. Rarely do you see the ocean looking like this. You alright? Sorry. Oh I thought you fell. No, I, I was I was just looking out for you. I don't want anything <laughs> bad to happen. But yeah, we're gonna see if we can get some bass and uh, wish us luck. If this doesn't work, we always have that pond to go back to. Bob. Bob. Black sea bass. Oh, epic! Yeah. That didn't take you very long. It doesn't usually. Little black sea bass, a new species for us this trip. <laughs> They're cool little creatures. I don't believe you can keep them right now, but they are fun to catch. This is just a little example of one. Literally first drop, I'm just kind of messing around. We're looking for any sort of activity, I'm waiting for the tide to turn, and yeah, these guys are fun. Just bottom dropping some grubs. See you, little fellow. The albums. They're albies. Someone grab this rod. Someone grab this rod. Quickly, quickly, quickly. All right, cast, 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 cast. Yep, 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 yep. Start reeling. A little slower. Yep. Reel up, reel up. Nick Taylor cast. Good cast. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Big cast. Big cast. Perfect. Faster. They're right there. They were right there. Oh, that's a big one, dude! Oh my god, that thing was huge! It's frustrating fishing with these guys. Because as soon as you get close, they're gone. I can't even see if I look, uh, if I'm like a character that's been unlocked or not. Ah, the Cape. The Cape can either be one of those things where it is feast or gluttonous famine. This morning we stumbled on the tail end of a really good bite and it, I think, gave me a bit of overconfidence. And with that, we explored some new waters with little to no results. Um, we found some false albies, but they just, they weren't working with us. And then we ended up losing our only leader. I forgot to bring like, light line, like 12 pound test. Everything we have in this boat is like big striper gear, like 30 pound test. So we threw the Albi mission out the window and then we came back in the pond to hopefully scrounge up some schoolies, at least get some active topwater action. And we've been waiting for the tide to turn for the past six hours. It's been a very rough day. Normally when we come to the cave, it's, it's just going crazy. We get lucky sometimes. We time things right in our favor, but this is an example in which you know, you have to watch the tide, you gotta pay attention to what the weather's doing, and ultimately, while it's been a beautiful, calm weather day, it hasn't really helped the fishing much. But you know what this means? It just means that we're setting up, hopefully for the next couple of days, to be really productive. That's what I'm hoping. Um, and you know, I haven't been here in a while. I, I'm, I'm throwing out excuses to why it hasn't been good, but ultimately, it's just, it's a bit of a learning curve for me. I'm more of a, a green bass guy opposed to a striped bass guy, but uh, ultimately, I feel bad for these guys who've just been sitting in my whaler contemplating our lives thinking what the hell are we doing right now that's why she goes sometimes but the sun's still in the sky which means we're still going to give it a true shot and maybe hopefully the tides will literally turn in our favor metaphorically speaking as well wow that 
is crazy. Whee! Oh. oh! No! Yay. That, it counts. No. No? No. Does it count, John? I don't think so. No. You gotta touch, you gotta at least touch leader. Okay. Grab leader. Right, well, I, I'll keep going then. <laughs> oh, it's actually really good. Nice yeah? No, oh, no, it's not that big. I thought the head was way bigger when I first saw it. It's a good fish, though. Oh, there's more. Is there more? There's another fish. The cat's not rose that. That's a good eat. I'll take that. Oh, John! Let the team down. <clears throat> Anyway, West Virginia. <laughs> what are these lures actually imitating? Dogs? They're supposed to be imitating big pogies. What's a pogie? It's like a big bait fish or or a big bunker, big bunker. Okay, it doesn't look like a fish, and I'm not really understanding why the fish goes for them. I think it just puts them in a trance. It like hypnotizes them. Mm. I think, and they're also just aggressive in nature too. So, I mean, I've caught some striper on like literal pieces of like wood with hooks on them when they're when they're in that kill mentality it's like <laughs> they'll eat any, any they literally and... yeah any sort of movement move they, they're very much like they have a strong lateral line and they're they're sight feeders so anything that's moving um that they want to kill or eat is going to get killed or eaten Oh. Ah. <laughs> Decent. Oh.